everybody. Welcome back to Brailsford Family Homestead. I'm Darcy and I decided to let one of my zucchinis grow to the size of a small child so that I could try something that I had seen on the internet called zucchini flowers. So I thought I would bring you along so we can try this together. I am going to dehydrate this, grind it up, and then I'm supposed to be able to use it as flour in recipes, not for the full amount, but for a good portion, I could substitute zucchini flour for all purpose flour. I'm hoping it's true, but I'm a little skeptical. I think what I'm gonna do is um, grate this in my food processor, just because then it'll be smaller pieces for it will dehydrate faster and it'll be a little easier to grind it up. I am going to, I just have one of the round, um, I think this one's a Presto and I have an Oster too, but I'm going to cut out some pieces of parchment paper to put on there so the shreds don't fall through. So let me get my food processor and we'll get going. I've got my one child size zucchini. <laughs> Uh, food processor, cutting board, and knife. I'm going to turn you down here so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm definitely going to have to cut this so that it will fit the hole in my food processor is not that big either. Just cut these ends off. This is why I don't like to let them get this big. I always pick mine about, <laughs> about this size, <laughs> so much smaller. It's really kind of spongy, dry in the center. I don't know. I'm thinking that I might want to take those seeds out. I'm not sure that that would be the greatest for the zucchini flower. I'm just going to do it. use up the meat portion, not the, the seeds. My chickens will love that. They're always happy to have snacks from the garden or the kitchen. Some of them come and stand at my kitchen door and stare at me like, do you have anything for me today? <laughs> This is only like half of it. <laughs> I'll have more to do. I'm gonna get this going and I'll cut up the more and I'll show you when I start putting it on the dehydrator trays. <laughs> about fill, <laughs> fill that up. Okay, let me just bring one of those trays here. It's not, oh, foul, someone on the floor. My dog, Max, the Chihuahua Max, is there picking up or eating <laughs> that zucchini that I dropped on the floor. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get these other trays filled and then I'll bring you back. I've got four trays here filled. So are a little bit, uh, filled a little bit more than what I would normally do, but I didn't want to have to turn on the other dehydrator just for like a partial tray. So it might take just a little bit longer because it's layered on here pretty thick, but it'll get the job done without running to um, 
So this is obviously going to be a multi-day video. I'll, I'll compile them all together. Um, once this is dry, I will show you and then we'll grind it up into flour and then I need to figure out what I want to try it in first <laughs> to see if it's good. So, so it's the next day and the zucchini is all dry. I'm going to first try putting it in my, um, this blender. If I don't feel like it gets it fine enough, then I am going to um, use a coffee grinder. So I'm going to get this loaded up in here. It definitely dried a lot faster. Um, let me turn you down here. It definitely dried a lot faster doing it in the shreds like this. So I will definitely do that again. I, I do dehydrate it. Um, in slices to eat in soups and things, but for something like this, this was definitely the way to go. So I'll get the rest of these trays loaded up and well, as much as will fit in here and I'll bring you back. It all fit in this blender. I had a thought like I should have weighed that zucchini to see how much it would yield for the dry blended for zucchini flour. Oh, maybe, maybe next time. <laughs> All right, I'm going to blend this up. Plug it in. All right, that was not on right. Let's see. Either that or my breaker has gotten. I have a breaker underneath my island in one of the cabinets and sometimes the pots hit it. So let me take care of that. Well, it's not the breaker, it's this. Okay, I do have a other blender <laughs> that sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. So I guess I will go dig that out so we can get this done. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. I've got it in here. I've kept this because it does work most of the time and there's some things that I make during canning season that I need a bigger capacity blender. So clearly there's several kitchen gadgets I need to replace because my stand mixer is out of commission, my hand mixer is out of commission, and now my blender is out of commission. <laughs> All right, let's see here. All right, this is not a fine. <laughs> Forgot. You got to let it settle down. <laughs> like any dry thing. It's not a real fine powder, so I may need to use my coffee grinder. If you have a Vitamix or something like that, I'm sure it would um, make it into a powder for you. This is just a Ninja Professional. I've had this since I made my kids baby food and that's been a long time ago. <laughs> so let me get my coffee grinder out and see if that does better. I've got it in here. This really doesn't yield a whole lot. So definitely one of the things is, is if you're gonna use this to replace some of your flour, you're gonna need a bunch of zucchini. But if you grow zucchini, or you know people who do, that should not be a problem. I do have a mortar and pestle. I guess I could try that if I wanted to, but you know, I'm not looking for super time consuming thing like that. <laughs> All right, that looks acceptable for what it's supposed to be. Let's see how much we got. A measuring cup here.
not quite half a cup. But that looks good. We're going to be using the zucchini flour today. I did make some more since the last time I recorded. It does take a lot of zucchini to make this flour. So keep that in mind that, you know, it takes quite a few zucchinis to equal this amount. Um, but they're easy to grow, you know, as long as you don't have problems with with the squash bugs or vine borers, of course. Um, mine have not had any issues. Uh, I think I would like it better if I could just dehydrate them outside if I had or somewhere, you know, where nothing would get to it. Just because I think about all the electricity that I'm using to run the dehydrator to make this. And so it kind of seems like a, a wash as far as expense goes. But if you do want to reduce the amount of flour that you're using for any reason or there's maybe a shortage for flour, this this would definitely be a good option. So. I asked my girls what they would like for me um, to make with this to, so we can test it out. And they both voted biscuits. I will uh, link the recipe here. I'll be making sausage gravy and biscuits for dinner tonight. I'm only going to make a single batch of the biscuits, I think, just in case we don't like them. I did also say maybe chocolate chip cookies, which my oldest was like, ew, no, don't do that to the cookies. But I am. I'm gonna make my chocolate chip cookies, which I will share with you later the recipe. Um, and see how it does. My chocolate chip cookies are very much loved by a lot of people, so um, I hope this doesn't ruin it. So let's get all of our things together, I'll make these, you join me, and we'll see if this is a thumbs up, thumbs down, epic fail for zucchini flour. First up is going to be the biscuits. I already have all-purpose flour, salt, and baking powder in my bowl. According to everything that I have researched, you can substitute one third of the amount of um, flour with zucchini flour. So for my recipe, that is going to be one third cup. Here I can turn it down so you can see. Um, now I did use let's see if I can get this in here um, yellow, but it was a golden delight zucchini from Hostools, I believe, and. Um, and a black beauty. So my color might be a little bit different than yours. See that? Okay. I'm gonna just spin this around. It'll be very interesting to see the color difference and the taste of these biscuits. I already shredded my butter as well. I'm just turn it down here just a little bit. I have that mixed up. I'm going to add my butter. I already shred this and just put it in the fridge just for make this video thing a little faster. <laughs> I'm just gonna kind of coat all of that butter with this flour. There will definitely be a color difference in this. Hopefully the taste is good might have to make another batch of biscuits if not so we can have dinner All right i'm gonna add my milk this is goat's milk but for the full recipe of this you can just go to the video that i linked okay, i'm gonna get this fully mixed up and start cutting out the biscuits i'll show them to you before i put them uh, I'll show them. Look at <laughs> oh, I made it worse. <laughs> anyway, I'll get these cut and I'll show you what they look like before I put them in the oven and after. All right, these are these are ready to go in the oven. They're not as tall as I usually do just because I only did a single batch versus a double batch. And I'm going to be honest right now. I am super skeptical by just the looks alone. Maybe I need to do a blind taste test. But I'm gonna put these in the oven and we'll see what they look like when they come out. I'm gonna mix up the cookies while the biscuits are in the oven. And I'm kind of like, oh, I hope I'm not ruining my cookies. I'm so skeptical right now. I really hope this works. I'm not gonna take you through the whole recipe of the cookies, but I will show you what they look like when they're all mixed up before they go in the oven and after. And of course, I will show you me tasting them. It's gonna be just under um, one third, 
of the flour for the cookies just because of the amount of flours that my recipe calls for. So I am going to sift it here with my all-purpose flour, salt, and baking soda. You want to see me do this part? Hmm. I did use my coffee grinder to um, grind up the zucchini. You can see there's a little bit of um, zucchini in there that is hard. I am not going to put that in the cookies just because. So there it is. I'll get the rec mixed up and show it to you. I just took these out of the oven. These are a lot browner than they would normally be for the same amount of time and they just they don't look very good they didn't rise as much though I, to be fair I did make them as thick so I can't say that but they're gonna be real hot but hmm. I guess the only way to know for sure is to taste it but uh, yeah I'm thinking that's a, a no-go for biscuits it's still very hot. I figured I would taste it hot since, you know, nothing beats a biscuit straight out of the oven. I will say, I should probably try this with some butter. Hmm. When you first go to put it in your mouth, you definitely um, smell the greenness, <laughs> I guess I should say. Some golden grass fed butter should be able to. It's not terrible, but. Hmm. This is nowhere near my biscuits watch the video of my normal biscuits. I don't know that the green is coming forth on the camera. Well, I mean, this is really dark too, and they're not burnt. I mean, I, this is the same amount of time. I'm gonna say for using this in biscuits, and now I'm really afraid for my chocolate chip cookies. Those are coming up next. The cookies are ready to go in the oven. So I'm gonna pop them in and we'll see how these turn out. There's definitely some color difference. Not quite as much, at least it doesn't look like it as with the biscuits, but we'll still see. I made another batch of biscuits so that we could have them for dinner tonight, just in case nobody's interested in eating <laughs> these. Now I will say that um, I checked my new batch of biscuits almost two minutes earlier and they were done. So something may be going on with my oven. So that might be why these are this dark, but even so they're, they're really dark compared to what I would normally have. I, um, my typical biscuit looks like this, delicious. Um, I made some a little thinner to try to make it just like what I did with that. And you can still see like just the flaky difference I mean, even at a little over a minute, almost two minutes more, I don't, this would not be so dark. I haven't tasted it, but I'll take a little bit of that one I ate earlier and uh, some of one of these and back to back. Okay. I have a tiny one because there was some <laughs> extra uh, dough left, so. Now, I don't smell it as much now 
that it's not warm. So maybe something with the, you know, as it being warm and steamy, I smelled more of the, like that green kind of thing. I should get my kids to taste this real quick. Yeah. All together, way better. Now, I will give my kids some. <laughs> All right, now that I chewed that up, I will give my kids some and let you know what they say. Um, you know, I know with a lot of substitutions, they aren't supposed to be exactly the same or they aren't the same, even though they're marketed that way. Like, you know, certain things made with cauliflower, you know, you're not gonna make something that tastes like a donut with cauliflower, not gonna happen. But this was just substituting one third of the flour. So I'm really not a fan. Hopefully the chocolate chips will change my mind and it will just be good for certain recipes. So that is coming out of the oven here in a couple of minutes. I'm gonna get my kids to try um, these two. Unfortunately, they, I don't put them in my videos so you won't get to see their faces. They could be quite hilarious with this, but I will let you know what they say. So this was a big shocker to me, but I had my kids both taste, blind taste test separately so they couldn't you know, influence one another, the two biscuits and they both liked the zucchini one better. I I might be a little offended, I'm not sure. <laughs> so, um, so we'll see. I don't know if I will make them again for them, if they like them, we'll see. But for tonight's dinner, I will let them have these with their sausage gravy. Here are the chocolate chip cookies out of the oven. I'll give them a taste test here in a second. They in person, they don't seem to look as green as they are on my camera right now. I do notice more inconsistency as, as far as how they flattened and things, but we'll see how they taste. These are taking a little bit longer to be able to be handled, um, like to firm up a little bit as they cool. I did select this one. Smells good. I don't think I smell zucchini. Now I have to say that chocolate chip cookies are my favorite. They are my kryptonite. So I would be a hard judge on those anyway, but maybe I could have cooked them a little bit longer or they're just taking longer to, to set up in the middle, but you know, gooeyness, gooeyness is good. I honestly, can't taste any difference at all. So maybe for the cookies, it's a thumbs up. Like I said, um, <laughs> excuse me. like I said, I don't know that the effort is worth it as far as like, you know, I don't know how much actual money I would be saving. Probably some. If there was a shortage, yes, it would help the flour go go farther. Maybe if, if for your dietary reasons, if you need to, then yes. But for certain things, definitely for biscuits, for me anyway, it would be a no-go. Um, if I had a lot of zucchini and needed to do something with it, okay. I do like to dehydrate zucchini in slices or in um, triangles to put in soups and things. So I guess if I had a lot of it like that, that was getting, you know, about to go bad or um, that I didn't think I would use, I could blend that up and use it as flour. But I'm just, I'm not sold. I'm not sold. I was hoping it would be a lot more like, Woo -hoo -hoo. you know, it works for the cookies, but yeah, I'm not sure that I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> so if you have given this a try, let me know what you think. Definitely try it because you know, your taste might be different. The, the cookies, it worked out. I could try some other baked goods, but maybe something that needs to rise like biscuits, it's not a good idea because I don't know. I'm just not, 
Uh, but you know, you don't mess with my friend Tommy's buttermilk biscuits. Well, except for you use goat's milk instead of buttermilk. <laughs> anyway, thanks for coming along for this experiment. I hope it, it helped you. Maybe you learned something or I encourage you to try something. I really appreciate you watching. Until next time, God bless.